go on down to Dallas. But that turned into a 14 year commitment going from Valine and Gary in Dallas, Gary Ewing, so I was Valine Ewing, into Knott's Landing in the cul-de-sac in California. And there you go. And it was a 14 year job, which nowadays uh, I think NCIS is the only one that's longer and Gunsmoke, the two, two that are longer, one and two ahead of us, but forever. And Grey's Anatomy, maybe. I forgot what season. Oh, that's you in. are right. You are yeah. absolutely right. Yes, indeed. That snuck in there because that's been going forever. I mean, imagine the res- not residuals because when you're paid big going through the door, you don't really get the big bonus residuals. That that's early on when you're a, a, a you know a, a, a continuous player and a character in the p- property in this show. You just get that great salary each week, which was great. And, uh, you know, they don't give you the residuals. Do you re- do you have memories of the t- your time on Dallas? Because, like, even before Knott's Landing, like, Val, you know, Val came back. Like, do you remember, like, Linda Gray and Victoria Principal and Larry Hatt? Like, do you have memories of that? Uh, all kinds of memories. And uh, mostly about the heat, hello, fellows, <laughs> ladies. Because humid, hot, to die for. And when you're inside... In fact, I had an Estee Lauder booking to go to New York, fly out of Dallas, and Larry Hagman and I had a motel scene uh, that I had to, it had to go fast and perfect so I could catch the plane to make the Estee Lauder job starting, you know, recording all day long the next day in New York. And it was so hot that both of us were swimming in perspiration. And they always have to turn off all the lights and noises and machines and air conditioning in this tiny motel room. And I tell you, I dropped 10 pounds, both from fear of not making that flight and just the heat. So that was one of the biggest memories and pushbacks is Dallas is hot and muggy, okay? Larry used to do off camera. Larry was the prankster. He and Patrick together would put anybody away and and cause the giggles. And I'm always so mm, serious, serious about doing the work and being the character and all the the kinds of things. And Larry would do his off camera, which is like you are now, but just slightly that way so that I can play with the actor that, that did the scene with me in a single shot for me. And he would swoop squeeze peanut butter through his teeth and the peanut butter would come spraying slurping out all over his mouth it, I mean how can I possibly you know Valine was high drama all the time and how could I focus and think about that and see shoots of you know thin wedges of peanut butter coming out of his mouth a, a real problem Seriously. Well, like you said, it did end, it did end up being a 14 year job. Like what, how was that when you were first approached? Like, Hey, you know, you've been in a few episodes. We're going to actually spin. Well, it wasn't a few. We just did one. And then they started saying, would you come back? Would you come back? That's Dallas. Would you come back? How about coming back? And so I ended up doing several Dallas's when it was basically a one shot Uh, or they didn't know, you know, that's how they play it. Say come in guest, and if you hit a home run, more than you, we're gonna, could you come back? You know, so, so that, it just snowballed. And then David Jacobs, who actually um, wrote Knott's Landing before Dallas, uh, they went to David and said, you know, we're kind of liking what we see here with Gary and Val. What if we spun them off? Cause he had pitched Knott's Landing and they said, no, we need something more glamorous. And then they did Dallas with all the, you know, unbelievable glamour and uh, you know the furs and the jewelry and all the money um, but Dallas had taken off and was a big hit so they said let's try Nas Landing now. So what was that like when you were approached like hey like you're on this Dallas it's you know who shot JR it was around that time the biggest thing we're going to well, actually spin this off. You know? I think Dallas in a way always was a big deal. I mean, it got toward the end because they run out of stories after years and years and they run out of, I don't know what to say, viable potential. You can go just so long. I think something like uh, CSI or some of those procedurals or even Grey's Anatomy, there's traffic all the time of new patients 
all kinds of traffic. But we were basically in the cul-de-sac, a small group, and Dallas was the ranch, South Fork. So it kind of kept it not claustrophobic by any means, but they run out of potentials. And so, um, you know, it, it was a kind of blessing that Knott's took another direction if you were a hardcore fan. That, that, that kind of helped both in a way. And Larry was, Larry and Patrick were the only two that guested on Knott's Landing. Patrick actually brought Gary and Val to the cul-de-sac. So they tied it in that way. They were all about, you know, cross, cross pollinating, if you will. Right. But listen, let's face it. There's a lot of shows that are spun off of successful shows that don't necessarily, that doesn't mean anything. We all know that. So when did it hit you that like, wait a second, we got lightning in a bottle here with Knott's Landing. Well, Michelle Lee, who was in the pilot for uh, Knott's Landing, always thought it would never go because she'd done a bunch of pilots that just didn't go. And I said, no, I got a feeling this will get picked up and it will go. But your question was, when did I know? Yeah, like, you know, when, you know, because like we have a lot of spinoffs that don't go in. Like, when did you know, like, wait a second, this Oh, might you mean be. that not Landing was yeah, going to land? Yeah, that it would be like as well, big as Dallas. Well, actually, the first year, it was a little up and down. It was a bit, not shaky, just wasn't the rocket that Dallas was right away because of the glamour and the wonderful look of uh, Victoria, uh, Larry, Linda Gray, all these wonderful people that were on. Uh, it was a little more pedestrian. David Jacobs, who created both shows, said uh, da uh, uh, Dallas is a uh, Knott's Landing is about us and Dallas is about them. Them is the wealthier contingent and the, uh, you know, flashy cars and flashy houses and this. Knott's Landing was a cul-de-sac of real people. And I think that's why it was so wonderfully strong and wonderfully touching if and when it was. And it seems to me a, sh a shame that they haven't made an attempt recently to revive or to have a retrospective or a chit chat like we did a couple times for CBS. It, it baffles all of us why Knotts hasn't been reapproached to kind of just have a reunion of sorts, either scripted or, uh, you know, a big couch in the living room, chit chatting, having fun, the core cast. There's a bunch of, bunch of wonderful actors. I would like to know that myself, actually. Well, really, it's been truly, and this one makes me pass out and want to touch up. It's been 40 years since uh, Knott's premiered. That's a long time and no read. Well, a couple of episodics and one chat, but we do a chat, if nothing else. These are wonderful people, you know, that were in the show, Bill DePain and um, uh, what's her, Michelle Phillips. And, you know, there was a rainbow of wonderful uh, wonderful actors but wonderful people and I don't know why has there like there was never because like you know you were in Dallas 2.0 on TNT I mean you made a guest appearance there's never been a like let's just do a full 